。総理、福島県民は重荷物を5つも背負って歩いています。地震、津波、原発事故、風評被害、そして会津地方の豪雨災害です。それなのに、総理が先日の代表質問に対する答弁で、福島県民に対する一車両は、すでに紛争審査会で決まったと、それだけ言って終わりにしたときには、さすがに私も、憤りを、感じ抗議をしました。苦しみも悲しみも、言えるどころか、ますます強くなっています。それは、除染も、賠償も、仕事も学校も病院も、何もかも一向に進まないからなんです。総理、福島県民を、見捨てるのですか福島県民は全員慰謝料をいただく権利があると思っています。本日はその中でも無用の被爆を受けた子どもたちの質問をします。この質問、毎回質問して、今日で4回目ですけれども、政府は先月も調査中という、隠してるとしか思えない答弁なので、今日は参考人を連れてきました。政府が避難指示を出さなかったことにより、屋外で被爆した女の子、ここに人型があります。そのお父さんです。ご本人も強い被爆を受けています。でも残念ながら、参考人の陳述は、本日、認められませんでした。子供が被爆した事実を、政府が8ヶ月経っても調査中。国会の調査委員会もまだ始まっていない。それなのに、国民の代表であるこの国会で取り残されて被爆した本人も陳述が認められない。信頼性ないって、あの場に取り残された1回目の被爆600人、2回目の被爆1万人を全員この場に連れてきたら、信頼性があるって言うんですか A huge amount of debris along Japan's eastern coast has been hampering the activity of fishing boats following the March tsunami. The government says it will complete clearing away the debris by March 2014. The wreckage of houses, boats and vehicles is still drifting at sea or has sunk to the bottom along a wide stretch of the coast. The debris is impeding navigation of vessels in and out of ports and fishing activities which have resumed since the disaster. The Environment Ministry and the Land and Transport Ministry have informed surrounding prefectures of the guidelines they have worked out for clearing away the debris. The guidelines say the salt content of debris in seawater may cause corrosion of incineration facilities and that wood debris should be exposed to the elements after being collected to get rid of salt before burning. The ministries plan to send officials to the affected areas to provide technical advice if requested by local governments. Farmers and food retailers are selling their products, including some from areas hit by the March disaster, at a food fair now underway in Tokyo. The fair opened on Saturday. Participants from around the country offered their wares at more than 80 booths. The booth of an agricultural cooperative from Miyagi Prefecture served skewered grilled beef. The staff assured customers that no radioactive substances have been detected in the beef. A retailer of fisheries products in Tokyo sold squid and mackerel from Miyagi. A grilled salted mackerel sandwich was especially popular among the visitors. The China Syndrome. It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. Right. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish. Or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. Wait till you get in that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. Same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. 
Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security men. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China Syndrome. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome. In 2007, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Homeland Security funded a proposed project to aerial spray over 7 million people in urban areas of Northern California. After citizens organized against the plan, officials were forced to reveal that the spray included multiple toxins that can cause disease and disrupt the reproductive cycle. Fortunately, civil resistance stopped the project. The U.S. government has been caught over 30 times covertly experimenting with toxic chemicals on its own citizens, from soldiers, prisoners, and Native American reservations to entire towns and counties. Mass covert sterilization of women and girls, usually using secret additives to vaccines, has been exposed in Brazil, Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, Mexico, and the Philippines. These have been under the auspices of such programs as John D. Rockefeller's Population Council, the U.S. Department of Health, Education and Welfare, where Nelson Rockefeller was undersecretary, and the Rockefeller-founded World Health Organization. Novartis and Syngenta, in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Department of Defense, have field-tested a spermicidal strain of GMO corn that would render male consumers infertile. This was quietly announced as a contribution to the world overpopulation problem. The list goes on and on. Right now, global human fertility is plunging. I'm convinced that this is no accident. For me, being willing to consider and research a direct depopulation agenda was critical to my getting the whole picture and to generating responses that could be sufficient to the task we face. I know this may sound crazy, but imagine that it's 1932 and we're in Germany. If I told you that in the next decade millions of people would be exterminated, you would say impossible. No one would do such a thing. This is what depopulation looks like today. I'm convinced that I'm not overstating the case. J. Ray 501. I'm back in Fukushima Diary, and I went into about, and this is a picture of Iori Mochizuki. He's a Japanese male, 27 years old, lives in Yokohama, Japan. Occupation, civil engineer and he's an exporter of Japanese pop culture goods. So, I went in on the date button and went back to November 4th, cruising around trying to see what other news he has posted in here. And this is one of his, one of his articles, Nowhere is Safe. In Tatsuka, Meoki Park, Yokohama, which is about 250 kilometers away from Fukushima, seven kilometers away from my home, they announced that the Chinese mushroom harvested in late March had 2,770 becquerels, is that kilograms of cesium? It's already too late. These Chinese mushrooms were already served to 794 volunteer park keepers who ate it. 258 of them were younger than 12 years old. Even from the Chinese mushroom taken in mid-October, they measured 955 becquerels kilo per kilogram of cesium. Ignorance of people make the contamination situation even worse. 
In Japanese schools, students are banned to talk. No question, no thinking. This way of di discipline might have been useful to sustain the economy based on mass production, but it's killing ourselves. Moreover, time of mass production was over decades ago. Leaf mold was banned to sell. However, ignorant companies restarted selling it. The picture below is taken at home center Nico in Kohukuku, Yokohama, where a citizen found 195 becquerels per kilogram of strontium and 10 minutes by car from my home. 0 0.822 micro sieverts per hour on leaf mold. I live in Yokohama. From my observation, everyone is getting sick. They don't take it seriously because NHK and Yumiuri newspaper do never admit it. People are too used to the spoon feeding of mass media. Informed people collect information on the internet. An activist actor Yamamoto Taro states, if you just watch TV and give up collecting info on the internet, you'll be killed by the government. We actually call mass media mass gomi. Gomi means garbage. We call Yomiuri newspaper Gomiuri newspaper. Yuri means seller. Gomi means garbage seller. How are they sick? Children, they are unusually pale, have black bags under their eyes, they look tired. I sometimes see kids vomit on the street. I think he was not drunk. Girls, receptionists of department store or city hall, they lost their voices. I can't hear their voice. Some of them have eyeballs congested and look like they are popping out. Plants, ginkgo or some street trees wither before turning to be yellow or red. They are literally dying. On the other hand, sunflowers are still blooming. It's already November. It cannot happen. Don't ignore the fact. The picture below is Hishihito Shino, an emperor family. It was taken on November 3rd, 2011. And the picture below is a sick Fukushima child. I hope he is still alive. I want you to look at the pale looking on the face and the black spots under the eyes. Also, the daughter of Prince Royal Eko was sent to a hospital. She suffers from microplaza pneumonia, which is actually spiking up this year. Japanese emperor is sick himself too. They explain it's not high fever, but he can, but he had to cancel conventions on 11-4-2011. Prince Royal attended on his behalf. Radiation does not cause only cancer. Cancer is just a result. It damages your immune system. You get sick from your weakest part of your body. As the result, you end up having cancer and die if you are unlucky. I personally don't need a radiation map anymore. I know we are already contaminated. I don't even expect anything from something like our government. I only expect more people to realize the need of radiation refugee visa. To me, it looks like an inevitable future. Wow, that was that was pretty sad. Um, <laughs> this is from somebody who lives right there. I'm going to continue to go back through some of the diary other dates and see if I can find some other information. I know there's there's tons in here that I've already read but I thought this one was um, pretty interesting. As always, God bless. Please come in here and uh, there is, you know, you can leave comments. Um, please leave Mochizuki uh, Please leave him some support comments, and if you feel moved to, you can always send him money.
At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, a new record has been broken, but not the kind you want to see. Robots sent inside the structure, which houses reactor number three, one of those with a fuel melted down in mid-March, measured radiation on the first floor at a level of 1,600 millisieverts per hour. This means that any human being who spent a few hours in that location would receive a dose of radiation sufficient to end one's life after a few highly unpleasant weeks. These findings underline that the situation at the Fukushima plant remains dangerous, even if the situation is gradually improving overall. The Japanese public remains concerned. It's an extremely regrettable matter. I have two children in elementary school, and when I think about the fact that there may be some impact on them when they are out playing or something, it worries me. The government continues to promise that they will keep the public informed. Wrapping up the nuclear crisis is only one of the major challenges faced by the government. Another is to rebuild the devastated northeastern coastline. A U.S. $157 billion supplementary budget has been passed by the Diet, more than doubling the funds earmarked for tsunami reconstruction, as well as funding soil decontamination efforts in Fukushima. Lawmakers, even of the opposition parties, emphasize to press TV that the Japanese government needs to keep its focus on such domestic issues right now. We are in the middle of the most serious national crisis that we have faced in 60 years. The natural disaster, the nuclear accident, an extended period of deflation, an Asian society, and a major rise in the value of the yen. Before we even consider foreign policy issues like relations with the United States or Southeast Asia or whatever, we have to put our own country back on its feet. In light of the heavy blows that Japan has been receiving this year, that seems like eminently sensible advice. Michael Penn, Press TV, Tokyo. A Japanese government panel says a project to build an experimental fast breeder nuclear reactor should be thoroughly reviewed before a decision is made on its future. The seven-member panel focused on the country's nuclear projects on Sunday, the first day of its four-day policy screening. Some panel members said it would be difficult to gain public understanding for the resumption of the Monju project. They said it's not clear if the reactor can be put into commercial service by 2050 as originally planned. Some members also said the Monju project to build a fast breeder nuclear reactor should be scrapped and a next stage fusion reactor should be developed instead. The Monju reactor uses plutonium extracted from spent nuclear fuel to generate power and has been regarded as a prototype for Japan's next generation nuclear plant. The panel concluded that a budget of $29 million for next summer's test run of the Monju project should be cut along with various maintenance costs except for the crucial portion. The panel concluded that a budget of $29 million for next summer's test run of the Monju project should be cut along with various maintenance costs except for the crucial portion. The science ministry says it will consider the next step after seeing the results of the discussion by a panel of cabinet members on the country's nuclear policies. This person also has a second question, which is really interesting, I think. Is water the best coolant? Isn't there a liquid that could absorb heat more efficiently? Yeah, my father worked for Westinghouse, uh, and they were designing a liquid metal fast breeder reactor that used liquid sodium instead of water, because liquid sodium does a real good job of transferring heat. The problem with the sodium, when it reacts with water or air, it's explosive. Uh, which makes it easy to find leaks in pipes and stuff, but it comes at a, kind of a high price. It's also very expensive. Fast breeder reactors are, are kind of like uh, race horses as opposed to thorough, uh, war horses. They're very finicky. It's very easy to lose control of a fast breeder reactor. So there's advantages to having liquid sodium remove the heat, but there's disadvantages of having less control over the reactor. And trying to meet that challenge was so expensive that all the countries that have tried fast breeder reactors have given up 
is too expensive for the, the electricity you generate. We almost have another break. Uh, yep. All right. um, sorry. Hang on, just one yes, go ahead. You know, the, the flip side of that is that maybe we should look at something other than circaloid clay. Because it's stainless steel doesn't react with water to produce hydrogen. So maybe the industry needs to say, well, we should forget about using zirconium cladding on our nuclear fuel. We need to look at a new metal to do that. The reason zirconium was chosen is because uh, economically it makes a lot of sense. It has very high neutron economy. It doesn't eat neutrons, so you get more out of your core. Uh, but so it's about money. Zirconium was chosen because it, it's the cheapest way to produce nuclear power. But there were reactors that had stainless steel before that, and there are other alternatives to zircaloy, which would avoid that explosion when you have cladding in touch with water. Japan's diet has now enacted a third supplementary budget totaling more than $150 billion for the current fiscal year through March 2012. The supplementary budget bill won approval by the upper house on Monday with a majority vote and there was a pretty wide margin there. The bill earlier passed the more powerful lower house. The budget aims to finance post-disaster reconstruction and to also counter the strong yen. It's setting aside $20 billion for a new fund from which grants will be offered to local governments to support reconstruction programs. $19 billion is earmarked for the rebuilding of schools, roads, and other infrastructure. $3.2 billion will be spent on radiation decontamination in areas affected by the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Now, in order to counter the effects of the historically high yen, the budget allocates $6.5 billion to subsidize firms that open new domestic plants and research facilities. The government is making it easier for disaster survivors to get into low-rent public housing. Only people whose homes were completely destroyed were originally eligible. But the government is relaxing the conditions. Now, people whose homes were only partly damaged but have since been deemed beyond repair will also be able to move in. At least 16,000 units of public housing will eventually be available in areas hit by the disaster. Today is Wednesday, September the 24th, and this is my last broadcast. Yesterday I announced on this program that I was going to commit public suicide, admittedly an act of madness. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I just ran out of bullshit. All right, cut him off. Leave him on. The only pine tree that survived the tsunami in the city of Nikuzen Takata is dying. There were 70,000 pine trees on a scenic part of the coastline before the tsunami. The sole survivor became a symbol of reconstruction. Conservation groups tried to save the tree by putting steel plates around its roots and pumping salt water out of the ground. But they say the roots are so rotten that the tree can't absorb water and nutrients anymore.
JRA 501. I'm in Fukushima Diary. Headlines are massive amount of strontium stocked at water purifying system. TEPCO published data of the radiation levels of water purifying system. Because the contaminated water is overflowing, TEPCO is struggling to purify and reuse it to cool down. This is the data of stocked radiation at each section of the system. Though they cover the data of 10-4 and 11-1, and D doesn't mean not detected here. They didn't. They mean it to be didn't measure for some reason. It's written at the bottom of the sheet. The data of strontium was taken on 9-20, and the results are beyond everyone's assumption. So here is a diagram of the facility, and then here are the charts. and the measurements of the radioactive concentrations. So we have the strontium 89 and 90 down here in the water treatment. Before entering the desalination facility, it's 2.9 and 2.9, respectively. Then the water entering into the evaporative concentration apparatus is 5.4 and 7.6. It gets worse. The concentrated wastewater from the evaporative concentration apparatus, 9.7 and 8.3. Okay, so that's off the charts. But now, on top of that, there's also iodine 131, cesium 134, cesium 137, uh, barium-140, uh, LA-140 is lanthanum, it's a synthetic uranium, then cobalt-58, which I couldn't find a lot on that other than that it's a highly toxic carcinogen, and then cobalt-60, <clears throat> Uh, that was, uh, that's a radioisotope with beta and gamma radiation. Externally, it causes skin burns, acute radiation sickness. Internally, it's absorbed by the liver, kidneys, and the bones. It causes cancer and death. So let's take a look at that one because I know that one was a big one. So let's see, before water entering into 7.1. Water treated, 4.3. Water entering the evaporation, 1.7. And the end result, the concentrated wastewater from the evaporative uh, apparatus is 6.5. So you can come in here and take a look at all these numbers. Then the article from Above Top Secret has some interesting information in here. Um, I'm not going to go through it all, but I did want to show you this. Let's see, the evaporated concentration section, what's coming out, strontium 89, 9.7, or 97 billion. Strontium 98.5 or 85 billion becquerels. Okay, then I wanted to show you um, this woman. She calls herself Itchy. I C H I C A X 4. This is a photograph of her daughter that she got caught in um, the rain. And this is in southeast Michigan. This woman is extremely knowledgeable in what's going on with Fukushima. Um, extremely. And so please come in and take a look at this video. Um, she took her daughter to the doctor and the doctor didn't know anything. He had no clue what she was talking about. She had to basically inform him and um, I, I think this was only a day or so after and when she took her daughter in 
this was the burn. The doctor admitted it looked like a burn, but it also looked like there was already an infection going on. Um, so they didn't even know what tests to look for. They didn't know what to do at all. So I haven't gone in here and seen if there's an update. This was on uh, November 18th, but um, I, I have been going back in and looking at some of her videos because she, she's on it. She knows what's going on with all this stuff much more than I do. I don't really know that many people that know as much as her regarding this. So isn't it just lucky for her that she does know so much? But here we are. You know, this was after a rain. I mean, this is in the United States and everybody's saying, well, where can that be coming from? That can't be coming from Fukushima. <laughs> With the statistics that I just gave you, and the fact that TEPCO is now uh, doing their cleanup, they're, they're actually incinerating everything. So we're getting, we're getting all that back up in the atmosphere. And I was trying to figure out why they would burn it. Why would, why would the government even let them burn it? Um, but then I read that TEPCO is making a grip of money off of the cleanup. So obviously they really don't care. In fact, um, the Japanese government, you know, it's just like any other government. They, they're not telling their citizens anything, nothing, you know, not a thing. In fact, they just had some, oh, some um, event, I think it was in Tokyo, where they had people running races and, you know, they, they've got this full-on exposure going on over there. It's in, it's in Tokyo. That's why I've been going into Fukushima Diary because this gentleman is from Japan. So he would know much better than, you know, <laughs> than the government because um, he's doing massive amounts of research and hooking up with other people that are doing independent studies. So, as always, um, I just wanted to put this out here and, uh, you know, we need to start working together again here on this. We've been all been so distracted by everything else that's going on. I mean, if there isn't something getting ready to crash down from the sky or, or if it's not the monetary system, if it's not war, if it's not flooding in the United States. I mean, it's like one thing after another. But this is, this is serious. This is serious stuff. I don't think this is, has anything to do with any event that's happening uh, that we don't know about in the United States. I don't believe that. I believe that these isotopes are recirculating around the globe. That's just my that's just my feeling about it from the research I did on Chernobyl. Anyway, one ten or the other. So as always, I will leave the links and God bless.
Hi guys, here is Henry. I am living 100 kilometers north from uh, Fukushima Daiichi and reflecting on the nuclear crisis in Japan. Uh, guys, uh, today morning at 4 o'clock 26 minutes in Japanese time we had a big earthquake uh, which we felt quite strong in Sendai. I checked after the earthquake was in uh, Fukushima. Actually it was in front of the Fukushima Daiichi inside the ocean probably 20-30 kilometers inside the ocean. The epicentrum was on the scale 4 and uh, the magnitude was 6 which is very very strong. Well today I checked the NHK and ANN news and uh, as you can see there is no word about this. Uh, I think this would be nice just to put small news uh, for us that actually the nuclear power plant, power plant is everything is okay uh, we don't get any news about it on the Japanese TV uh, the situation in Fukushima seems to be completely ignored by the Japanese media a uh, meeting of nuclear experts from around the world is discussing ways to promote medical research and treatment for radiation exposure. The two-day symposium got underway on Wednesday in Hiroshima. The gathering is the first of its kind, jointly sponsored by Hiroshima Prefecture, medical organizations, and the International Atomic Energy Agency. One of the speakers was Fukushima Medical University professor Seiji Yasumura. He is in charge of conducting a survey on the health of residents in Fukushima Prefecture following the nuclear disaster. But Professor Yasumura warned that the budget for the survey is not sufficient and may run out. He also said that few people are filling out the surveys that would help him estimate levels of radiation exposure. He said help is needed. IAEA Deputy Director General Daud Mohammad said the agency will provide all possible support to Fukushima Prefecture if requested. Notice how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing?
Because I got to tell you the truth, folks. I got to tell you the truth. When it comes to bullshit, big time, major league bullshit, you have to stand in awe. ただ、この海外メディアでいうと、その一方におきまして、えー、日本の実情というものを正確に伝えきれている、伝えていないと、ある意味誤解に基づいた報道も多くございました。私が見た範囲におきましても、例えば春先、花粉症対策でマスクをかけている方々ばかりを映して、日本人は放射能対策でみんなマスクをしてるんだとか、あるいは、えー、計画停電の影響でホームに人が溢れかえっている状況をこれでもかと映してそして日本人は、えー、特に東京の人たちは原発事故の影響で、えー、逃げ出そうとしているんだと,というような報道がなされているわけでありました、えー、こうした報道があるとどうしてもやはりこれはいわゆる風評被害につながっていくということでもあります日本から海外に輸出するそうした産品についてさまざまな規制が輸出規制がかけられているこのことが大きな問題だと思いますあの徳永委員がですね、えー、おっしゃいましたけれども確かに外国のメディアがですねマスクをしている人ばかりを映してしまうということによる風評被害というのはあるというふうに思いますしたがって私もそれぞれの外相会談等で私の実家があ第一原発から40キロのところにあって、まあ、たまたま線量があまり出ておりませんけれども家族も含めて、えーまあ、平穏に暮らしているという話をするととても驚いて、えー、いるんですねですからあの外務省としてもですね日本に滞在をしたことがある方々をもう一回お招きをしてそして帰ってもらってネットで流してもらうとかですねそういったことをさせていただいているということはご存知の通りでありますで今現状ということでありますがあの一定の成果は出てきてますただまだあまだだというふうに思ってます米国はあこれは大体日本とほぼ同じになってます、えー、この5月に温家宝首相が来日をされた折にもおこの農産品の輸入制限について、えー、緩和をしていくのだということをおそう温首相は明言をされたわけですけれどもこれいまだに実現をされておりません、えー、ホノルル APEC の際に日中首脳会談がございましたその際に私からご金投主席に対しては日本産食品等に対する中国の輸入規制措置につき緩和措置の実施に向け迅速な対応を要請をいたしましてまた一層の緩和さらには早期の解除を要請をいたしましたこれに対して胡錦涛国家主席からはすでに一部緩和を行っているが今後科学的検証及び安全性を踏まえてさらなる緩和について検討したいとの応答がございましたあのまた今週は東アジアのあの東南アジア諸国、ASEAN 諸国とのいろんな会合がございます、そこで恩賞とお会いする機会もございますので、改めて私からもまたさらなる働きかけをしたいと思いますが、あのついでに立たせていただいたんで、先ほどの資料の中で、農林水産物の日本の輸出相手国、香港なんですね、これ、アメリカよりも倍近く、中国などよりもはるかに日本の農水産物を買ってもらっている国で、この,アセアあの APEC では、香港の首脳も来ていましたで香港の首脳には直接お会いをしてぜひ被災地にをたくさんの代表団を連れてきていただいて現地に行って食べていただいて帰っていただくそういう約束をさせていただきましたのであのそれはまさに輸,入輸出促進の弾みになるというふうに思っております。That'll be our motto. They won't die.
Fukushima Prefecture has found rice contaminated with radioactive cesium above the tentative government limit from five more farms. The prefectural government said on Friday that the farms are in the Onami district of Fukushima City, about 56 kilometers northwest of the Daiichi plant. The highest level of cesium detected was 1,270 becquerels per kilogram. The national permissible level for rice is 500 becquerels per kilogram. Earlier this month, the prefecture found rice samples from a field in the district that also contained radioactive cesium above the limit. Shipments of rice harvested from the area have been suspended by the central government since last Thursday. The prefectural government said no rice from the district has gone on the market since then. No rice from the district has gone on the market since then. Okay. Fukushima Prefecture is conducting an emergency test on all rice grown at the 154 farms in the Onami district. UN food agencies say North Korea needs more than 400,000 tons of grain to alleviate a serious food shortage. 
The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Food Program released a report on estimates of North Korea's grain supply, supply and demand on Friday. The agency say while harvests are forecast to increase by about 8.5 percent from last year, the country will still need to import more than 700,000 tons of grain. With planned imports for the year at more than 300,000 tons, an uncovered shortfall of 414,000 tons remains. The report concludes that nearly 3 million people will continue to require food assistance in 2012. It also says that the country's import capacity is constrained by high international food and fuel prices caused by rising demand in emerging economies. Stop being so nervous. Later on, we'll get ice cream. An environmental equipment firm in Tokyo has developed a new type of disposal equipment that can clean up radiation-contaminated debris. A town in Fukushima Prefecture will begin trial use of the equipment. The company says the wreckage is heat-treated in an oxygen-free environment and broken down into gas, oil and ceramic powder. The treatment can reduce the volume of rubble from the earthquake and tsunami in March to about one three hundredth of the current size on average. As the ceramic powder absorbs the radioactive material, the firm says the process is expected to create no contaminated ash. Could you hear everything? Yes. Many municipalities in Fukushima Prefecture are struggling to clean up radioactive debris from the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The town of Hirono in Fukushima Prefecture plans to begin test use of the equipment next month and consider its full-scale introduction. I even went so far as to falsify the report. Several thousand anti-nuclear protesters have clashed with police in Germany, trying to disrupt a shipment of reprocessed nuclear waste. At least 20 people were injured. On Saturday, thousands of citizens set fires and staged a sit-in on rail tracks that will be used for a train to carry nuclear waste to a storage facility in Gorleben. The cargo train carries about 150 tons of reprocessed nuclear waste from France. Germany has a contract with a French firm for the reprocessing of nuclear waste. It was the first shipment of nuclear waste into the country since the March nuclear accident in Japan. In Dannenberg, near the storage facility, more than 20,000 people held a rally to call for an immediate shutdown of all nuclear plants in the country. The German government decided to shut down all of the country's plants by 2022, but a plan to build facilities for the permanent disposal of nuclear waste has been suspended. But a plan to build facilities for the permanent disposal of nuclear waste has been suspended. What the fuck? People in a town in disaster hit Iwate Prefecture got to enjoy a traditional year-end event on the Saturday, making rice cakes. The event took place in a schoolyard in Miyako City, where temporary homes have been built. The residents took turns pounding the rice cake and called out each time the mallet was brought down. The fresh rice cake was then coated with toasted soybean flour with sweet bean paste and served to the participants. It's so tasty. I think I pounded the rice cake very well. <laughs> the event was organized by a group supporting people in the disaster hit areas. Mountain climbers and university students joined the event as volunteers. I'm glad that many people gathered and were able to smile together. The evacuees and volunteers came to know each other through this event. U.S. space agency NASA has launched its new sophisticated Mars probe in search of evidence of life on the Red Planet. 
An unmanned rocket carrying the space rover Curiosity lifted off from Cape Canaveral in Florida on Saturday morning local time. Curiosity is the largest Mars probe ever, and it cost NASA $2.5 billion to develop. NASA says Curiosity will land on Mars some 200 million kilometers away in August. It says the nuclear-powered probe will use six wheels to move around and sample rocks and sand from the surface using various instruments such as a robot arm and a drill. It can analyze samples on the spot. NASA says rocks in the area where Curiosity will land likely contain water, and it hopes to find organic compounds, a sign that life may have existed on Mars. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden says he and other staff are excited to send the state-of-the-art space rover to Mars. He said that NASA will work on the technical know-how for a human mission to the Red Planet. The U.S. government has announced a plan to send manned spacecraft to Mars by the middle of the 2030s.